Hi, and welcome back to another podcast with Mr. Hagen. On this podcast, we're going to continue to talk about externalities, but we're going to look for an alternative solution. On past videos, we've talked about solutions developed by Arthur Pigou, uh, the Paguvian tax and the Paguvian subsidy. Now we're going to look at, at the ideas uh, developed by Ronald Coase, what has become known as the Coase Theorem. And in this idea, instead of looking for a government solution using taxes and subsidies like Arthur Pigou did, we're going to look for market solutions to externality problems. We're going to look for market solutions to the externality problems. And we are going to assume zero transaction costs. And this, this I'll talk about this later on, but this is a huge assumption right here, and it's, it's almost never true. But let's just make that assumption to kind of get started on this, to get started on developing the idea. And, and then we'll talk about how transaction costs get in the way of developing a Cosian solution. So the big idea here it, it, with, with the Cosian solution is to create better defined properties for property rights. So instead of using Paguvian subsidies and Paguvian taxes to fix externality problems, the problem there being that, that being a problem of measurement, how are we going to measure how big these externality problems are and then implement a tax or subsidy accordingly, instead what we're going to do is just leave it all to the market, uh, create better private property rights and just, and just leave the whole thing to the market. So to get an idea of how this works, let's look at the following situation. Let's, let's imagine uh, some guy and, and some girl, they live near each other, Jack and Jill, maybe they live next to each other in an apartment building, and Jack owns a dog, and he enjoys this dog, he takes him for walks, or throws ball with the dog, or whatever, just enjoys the dog, gets happiness from the dog, uh, but Jill, she dislikes the dog, because the dog barks uh, all the time, keeps her up at night, things like this, so so we have a, a negative externality problem, in that Jill, Jack, Jack is the one who went out and bought the dog. The, the the trade, the people internal to the trade were Jack and and the person that sold him the dog. They were internal to the trade. But Jill, she is suffering as a result of the trade. So she is, she is the non-consenting third party who is suffering from a negative externality. So in, in a Paguvian world, we would just we would tax do, tax dog ownership. That would be our solution. But but how do we know how big that tax should be, there's measurement problems. So so Ronald Coe says, well, what if instead we, we solve this by better defining private property rights? So one way to do that, there's actually two ways to do this. One way to do this is to give private property rights uh, of the dog, give those private property rights to Jack. Give Jack the private property rights over the dog. And efficiency says that if the benefits of the dog outweigh the cost, then the dog should stay in the apartment with Jack. But on the other hand, if the cost of the dog outweighs the benefits, uh, then, then the dog should leave. The dog should not be allowed to stay in the apartment building. So if we give private property rights to Jack over the dog, uh, let's, let's see what happen, what's going to happen as a result. Let's see, let's see if we get an efficient outcome if we do that. So imagine this. Imagine that Jack gets $500 of benefits uh, from the dog. So that be, means that he'd be willing to pay uh, up to $500 to, to keep the dog. But Jill, she suffers $800 of costs uh, sh fr from the dog barking. So she'd be, that means she'd be willing to pay up to $800 to get rid of the dog. So, so efficiency says that the cost of the dog, in this case, outweigh the benefits. So what should happen, the most efficient thing, I should avoid the word should, that's, that's normative. The efficient thing would be for the dog to go. Okay, for the dog to go to you know out to a farm with 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 uh, another owner or something like this. So the dog should go. Let's see if the dog will go. So we've given Jack private property rights over the dog. So he, he can keep the dog in his apartment and the dog can bark all, his, all he wants. And uh, Joe just has to deal with it because Jack has private property rights over the dog. But here's the question. The question is, what would be a potential market solution? Well, what if Jill offered Jack, let's say, let's say she offered Jack $700 to get rid of the dog. 
would Jack be willing to do that? Well, if Jill offered, if Jill pays Jack, so Jill's going to pay Jack $700 to get rid of the dog, uh, what would both sides be willing to do this? Well, Jill would be willing to do it because she's suffering $800 of damage and she only had to pay $700 to get rid of the dog. And and actually, Jack would be willing to do this because he only values the dog at $500. So the $700 that he receives from Jill is greater than the $500 at which he values the dog. And so Jill will pay Jack to get rid of the dog, and uh, the dog will go. Uh, both sides both, both sides will agree to this, and uh, the dog's going to be gone, and the most efficient thing happened. And notice that the most efficient thing happened with without the government having to know what these numbers are. Nobody had to implement a tax or a subsidy. Nobody had to know how much Jack and Jill valued the dog or suffered from the dog barking. Uh, th they were all aware of their own uh, their own numbers. So all we had to do was create a private property right, and let them trade, and the efficient thing happens. The dog the dog will go. Now, what about the alternative? What about the alternative? What, what if what if Jack values the dog at a thousand dollars, and Jill uh, she's suffering eight hundred dollars of costs from the dog barking? So that would suggest that the dog should stay. The benefits of the dog outweigh the costs, and the dog should stay. Okay. So so up here I should have written this. Up here the costs outweigh the benefits. So the dog should go, and the dog did go. Down here the benefits are greater than the cost and so really efficiency says that the dog should stay the efficient thing I should avoid saying the word should the efficient thing is that the dog would stay let's see if that would happen so Jill she would be willing to offer up to eight hundred dollars uh, for Jack to get rid of the dog so so Jill offers to pay Jack she Jill offers Jack uh, eight hundred dollars to get rid of the dog she offers eight hundred dollars but what's Jack gonna say but Jack's Jack's values the dog at a thousand dollars he he values the dog at a thousand dollars which is greater than the eight hundred so Jack will refuse Jack refuses to get rid of the dog and as a result if you whoops, sorry about that Jack refuses to get rid of the dog and it, and and therefore the dog stays and that is the efficient thing. The dogs, the dog, uh, will stay. So, it, if we get pro proper rights over a dog, the most efficient thing will always happen. If if the benefits outweigh the cost, the dog will stay. If the cost outweigh the benefits, the dog will go. Now, let's see if this is true, because Jill might say, "Well, this is unfair. Jack has uh, private property rights over the dog. This is this is not fair." So. So let's say, let's go over here and let, well, let me just get rid of all of this. So let me say if we switch this, what about if we give private property rights to Jill over noise? So Jill gets to define the amount of noise that, that is allowed to exist in the apartment building after whatever, after seven o'clock at night or something like this. So let's see if we still get, if we still get the uh, optimal outcome. So here, let's go back to the example where, where the, the benefits of the dog are $500 to Jack. Jill is suffering $800 of costs. And so uh, she, because she has private property rights over the noise, she can just demand, since the dog's barking, she can just demand that Jack get rid of the dog. She can just demand it, and Jack would have to get rid of the dog. Uh, but Jack, he wants to keep the dog. So Jack would be willing to offer, Jack would be willing to offer up to five hundred dollars to keep the dog. Jack offers five hundred dollars to keep the dog. But what's Jill gonna say? She's suffering eight hundred dollars, which is more than the five hundred dollars that that's being offered to her. So so we can say that Jill will refuse. Jill refuses. So if Jill refuses, that's going to mean that the the costs of the dog outweigh the benefits and the dog will go. Jill gets to say, dog out of here off to the farm, and the dog's gone. So the most efficient thing happened. When the costs outweigh the benefits, the dog will go as efficiency would require. And then finally, the last possibility is right here. If the if Jack gets $1,000 of benefits from the dog, Jill's suffering a cost of $800 uh, worth of damages from the dog, and Jill has private property rights, so Jill can say, hey, dog's gone because of the barking. Uh, Jack could come to her and he could offer her, Jack could offer 
uh, $900, and she would take the $900 because it's higher than the than the 800 So Jack will pay Jill. Jack will pay Jill, let's say, $900. And Jill will accept that, and so the dog will stay. Dog will stay, and and that's the that's the efficient thing. Because why? Because the benefits of the dog uh, uh, are greater than the cost, and the dog will stay. That's that's the efficient thing. So here's here's the point. No matter what benefits are greater than what cost, and no matter who gets private property rights over the dog, the most economically efficient thing will still happen. So well-defined private property rights, this is the Cosian idea, well-defined private property rights solve the problem and lead to an economically efficient outcome in every case we got the economically efficient outcome based on our rules of efficiency the, we got an economically efficient outcome uh, without taxes and without subsidies all we had to do is clearly define private property rights and let the market and let the market work and notice there's all kinds of other solutions other than just getting rid of the dog um, so so maybe here in this example Maybe here in this example, uh, Jack could Jack could uh, pay to uh, take the dog to a dog trainer, and maybe that would cost less than five hundred dollars, and he would keep the get to keep the dog. I'm just saying, uh, I'm just doing the example of the dog going either you know being thrown out of the apartment or staying in the apartment and I'm just saying that there are more options I'm not going to go into all the options but there's dog training he could pay for there's who knows all the possible market solutions that that could develop Lot, lots of market solutions that that could develop all right so well defined private property rights solve the problem if here's the big if if there are zero transaction costs but of course transaction costs are not zero and we'll talk more about that on another video all right, this has been Mr. Hagen on another Econ Podcast. Thanks for joining me, and we'll see you on the next Econ Podcast.